Today on Media Litter Sandwich, we talked to Sam about her travels and photography and art and... Killing cameras? Oh, uh, yeah. So many cameras. R.I.P. camera. Welcome to Media Litter Sandwich. I'm Cody from Toting.com and YouTube.com slash Toting K. With me is William from AllAboutWilliam.com. And with us, our guest is an action photographer, artist. Uh, I know I'm missing stuff here. Cook. Cook. Sort of. Um, yeah, all those things and more. All kinds of crazy all the time. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm Samantha Weimer. Uh, my website is artworkofsam.com. Um, sometimes I go on crazy adventures and I take crazy pictures and fall. Mostly I fall. But, <laughs> eh. <laughs> you've been to Yosemite. I've said that wrong. Yes. How about you tell us where you've been because I'm going to mess up every word. I've been to, well, 30. 30 national parks now. Um, Yosemite was my last trip across the United States to get there for my birthday, and uh, that was fun. From uh, Pennsylvania, too. Yeah, all the way across. And you even got... Now, you actually have a blog categorizing, the, you know, going through some of your stories and stuff, too, on the mm -hmm. website. Yeah, going through um, other national parks on the way there, and different adventures, places I haven't been before, crazy, scary, stupid, crazy roads. And armadillos. Don't even. Can I swear? Because that. <laughs> hey, armadillo. I, I prefer if you don't, but if you have to, we we have had some people uh, uh, couldn't contain themselves. Bleepity some... bleep 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 armadillos. Bleep. Yeah, we, 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 we've added those before, too. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we. I still remember the one of the first times I had to bleep people. The guy cussed so much, I missed a couple. <laughs> yes, I remember we were previewing it. I was like, "Hey, you missed a few." Oh, <laughs> it was just like ev. It was everywhere, and that movie. Every sentence. Yeah, it was uh, the main actor from uh, Hectic Night, oh, which is. I remember on, that. Which yeah. is on Amazon Prime now. Oh. So if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can go watch that movie. Uh, and, and he, he uh, oh yeah, he's got a YouTube channel now and he does other stuff. He was the creepiest Santa Claus I've seen this year on his YouTube channel. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, big what's up to Peter Litvin, which is probably watching this because he's been mm -hmm. tagging me in a bunch of stuff, so I've been tagging him back. <laughs> and he said, yeah, keep doing it. So, cool. Hey. Big thumbs up to Peter. <laughs> anyway, Sam, you know, so photography, now you started, when did you start photography? When my parents gave me a camera and then I broke it. Uh -oh. That this seems to be an ongoing thing. <laughs> I broke my first one too. Yeah, I got it wet. It took my photos with it. it I took mine apart and couldn't put it back, couldn't put it back together. Yeah. I want to know how it worked. I've done that before. Uh -huh. I used to use a wood burning kit to get to the plastic. Uh -huh. Dad wasn't happy about that. <laughs> he didn't take it away, though. There's that. And as long as you still got to keep yeah. it. <laughs> I still have that thing. I still use it. And you mostly prefer point and shoots. Yeah. Um, what, why is that? Because I can carry it with me, and it's there when I need it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, some of the national parks, they don't allow you to have a tripod either. Mm -hmm. So you can't have a tripod. Yeah, and also more point and shoots are waterproof. I yes, and they're not as expensive as a really big camera that's also waterproof with really expensive lenses that usually aren't waterproof. Right. Right. Uh, I, I saw a lens that was like three thousand dollars. You didn't even want to have near water. Mm, I'd kill it. Don't let me touch it. I don't want to pay for that. <laughs> Although I can attest that mine can survive a nice drench, uh, rainfall. <laughs> mine couldn't. I had a point and shoot before this. It was a Kodak, some, uh, cool picks, maybe? But I took it on my last adventure, walkabout across the U.S. Mm -hmm. And on Zion, 
when I was doing Angel's Landing hike, which I recommend, but not if you're afraid of heights. Uh, and if there's a storm coming, uh, don't go. Just, just don't. Just wait. Just stay a few more days because it's beautiful. But don't go on that hike. In Did a storm. you go during the storm? Yeah, I was afraid of getting blown off the mountain. There are parts of it that aren't. I'm not kidding. Are only this wide. Video version is always different than the audio version. It's like two foot wide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I have pictures of that on my website as well. But, oh, that was terrifying. But there was a storm and my camera got wet. And the nifty little thing that I didn't know about SD cards. <laughs> oh, no. Is that if you get them wet, they corrupt. Ooh. And they kill themselves. So I had everything up from when I left to Pennsylvania to Zion on that SD card. I had some of it backed up, but I lost everything from the past two parks that I had been at before then. I ended up, a god among men, was able to save my photos from this encrypted, destroyed, damp, stupid SD card. And I learned a lesson that day. Do not get your SD cards wet. Your camera does not like it either. Uh, But SD cards especially do not, do not get them wet. Also back up however you can, as much as you can. Um, Seems like everything we do, we need a backup of a backup of a backup. Oh yeah. yeah. But the fun thing was that my computer had gone down that day as well. I remember you telling me this. So I had... No way to back it up, period, Mm -hmm. because it decided I'm going to give up on life. It was the hard drive. So Murphy's Law, it's real. It's active. It exists. and It follows us every day. Whenever someone says Murphy's Law or Murphy's Law, I just think of Officer Murphy, Robocop. (laughs) (laughs) So, Sam, you do have a college degree. Yeah. Yay, I have that paper that everybody says you need to have, and I don't have a job in art yet. <laughs> so, well, what's the degree in? Uh, fine arts, and I have a minor in art history. Mm-hmm. Well, you do have art stuff. I do art stuff, yeah. I can do basically all arts. All of the arts. And it's on your website? Yeah. Well, most of it, and I have it under my student, my undergrad tab, what okay. I did. The ceramics, the metal smithing, the painting, the drawing, the printmaking, the random other stuff, graphic design, photography. Uh, was it just mixed media? I think that was a thing. What's mixed media? You put all the medias together and you go, it's an art. Okay. I think of audio and video. And oh, no. Mixed media is like, I'm going to take this ceramic piece, and then I'm going to take this metal piece, and then I'm going to shove it together, and then I'm going to put it on a canvas, and then I'm going to paint on it, and then I'm going to do this. That sounds like fun. <laughs> it's amazing and painful sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I did a lot of that, a lot of big. My senior show was actually uh, big pieces of black backdrop paper, and there was gesso on it. There was coal dust on it there was charcoal on it and then it was all smeared together with either the one was done in white wine that had gone bad and i was not happy and the rest of it was rubbing alcohol and i created images like brought back images out of this carnage mess that i had created of um, people on various positions and poses and i did that with a couple it just got bigger until the senior show. <laughs> and now they're living upstairs in my bedroom. I hope they're okay. They're probably not okay. They're probably dead. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. my senior artworks. <laughs> so um, we have lots of stuff on our table today as I move my phone off the table. <laughs> Uh, including passports, and we see your adventure hat, and a blanket, mm-hmm. and a Susan. lens. Um, yeah, yeah, your GPS, yes. Your GPS name, Susan. 
Um, what was it, is that a med kit? What's in that green container? That's the thing I usually have SD cards in, but that one has matches in it. Okay, that that's a good idea. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they can't get wet. <laughs> It'd be bad if matches got wet too. Yeah, I need those. <laughs> Never underestimate the power of fire. And do not set fires where they tell you not to set fires. Oh, that's because you do a lot of camping uh, yes. at, the, at the parks. <laughs> yes. Getting... Let the wildfires and everything. I saw too many people lighting up fires in, um, where was I? Kings Canyon. And there was blatantly everywhere all these signs saying, please don't light a fire because we are in the middle of a drought and everything will catch on fire. Do people listen? No. No, they don't listen. Ugh, make me mad. <laughs> I'm gonna set this whole park on fire because I'm above <coughs> the rules. Mm. <coughs> now, I know. <laughs> Sorry. Now I know a lot of people would love to do trips like this, and they're like, "Well, I don't have any money. Like, how much do trips like this roughly cost?" Um, I can tell you right now, it's five hundred dollars to get across the United States, taking I eighty. Mm -hmm. I had to do mm. that trip. Twice, twice now. And the first time I did it, I was coming home to my littlest sister's graduation. I wanted to be there on time. And I'm like, well, I'm almost out of money anyway. I put $500 back in my wallet. And I'm like, this will get, let's see how far this gets me. And um, straight across on I-80, it's about about 500 I think it ended up being like 480 or something with that. But then there's Ohio with their toll road. Hi, Ohio with your toll road. You stupid Ohio with your toll road. They always have a toll it's road. It's for $15, and now it's raised, and I don't want to know what it is now. <laughs> so does that include gas? Yeah, that's all, like, gas. Okay. It's all gas and toll. And There's what kind not, of car was, were you driving? Uh, Suzuki SX4. It's an all-wheel drive, little hatchback that has done things you probably shouldn't be doing with a hatchback. <laughs> 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 um yeah she's been down canyon walls and up canyon walls and down some scary roads and off-roading and I, I broke her i've put her back together i've modified her question mark yeah i did modify her yeah it's great <laughs> i took out the back seat so now i can put more stuff back there and or my body <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing worse than sleeping sideways in a car when your feet have to kick the window and you're like oh i need to stop in my sleep doing that because i'm gonna break my window and i can't pay for that and unfortunately i haven't seen one in a junkyard yet so i couldn't even junk one and put it in myself so if you see one in a junkyard let me know <laughs> i need parts <laughs> lots of parts backup parts so what about the cost for going through the national parks Actually, um, I have an access pass. Hold on. I keep it in my wallet because I'm smart like that. Wonderful Cthulhu wallet. We want to see it? That. <laughs> Again, the video version is different than the audio version. I can't see it over the disc cap. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Cthulhu wallet. But it's an access pass and you mm -hmm. can get them oh. and they're good for a year. I think they're $80 still right now. And they will get you into all the national parks um, for, well, for free, basically. You don't right. have to pay the entrance fee. And if you go to four parks, it basically pays for itself because it ranges from 20 bucks a park to like 30 bucks to get into. Mm -hmm. I think it was Yosemite might have been like 30 or something. But for how many parks I went to, it's, it's worth it. It's so worth it. You know, that, now we mentioned passports on the table. What we're talking about is national park passports, which are books that you can pick up at at pretty much any national park, I assume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can get them at some supermarkets too, and yeah, they, Costco they sells some. Yeah. Okay. So you go through and you get them stamped because you can get because if you're looking for a free souvenir, they could stamp the passport books. Yeah, and you get stickers for them, and you put those stamps on them. And they sometimes have commemor commemorative stamps, like, uh, let me see here. Uh, there's somewhere. And they have, like, personal stamps, like, look, that, that's... Oh, it's a slug. It's a slug. It's a little banana slug. 
and that was from Olympic National Park, and they have them all through the park. I, my tent was covered, and it was adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Like the first time I went into the park, I'm like, what is this yellow thing on the ground? And I picked it up and I'm just like, you're a slug. And then it got warm and it came out and it ended up being like that big. And I'm like, like you're adorable. <laughs> and he's just the chillest thing ever. He was <laughs> a bright yellow slug. Yeah, I've noticed that you have uh, on your Facebook profile, you have a couple like arts of yourself like drawings of yourself and now you almost always have a slug on your head yeah i love that little thing he was he was cute and then like i said on the my tent one time he there's like six of them just crawling around in the morning it was adorable and they were all either like yellow or brown and yellow or yellow and brown speckled they looked like little bananas it was pretty pretty cute i'm trying to find the uh oh that one's cool What's your favorite thing to uh to to photograph? Um I've kind of gotten into like putting people, like a lot of photographers that take pictures of like nature and stuff, they don't like having people in their photographs. And yes, there is that legal aspect, but Usually if you just ask them, hey, do you mind if I use this picture? Or if you're far enough away that you can't even, like, they're turned around, you can't can't, see their face. Yeah, if you can't see their face, it's okay. Like with the sequoias, they're so massive. There's no way to give them scale unless you have a person in the photo, which is literally this big old tree. Okay, I'm going to be to scale, sort of. So, (laughs) it's a big old tree. Imagine this is, and this... Little thing. Like a Lego man. A little Lego man. You're not even a Lego man. Is a person. So you got like... Little, okay, wait, the base is here. <laughs> person and then... Something like large, that. Large. Large. We'll just say large. Large. You could go see my go see my website. You'll see the photos and the people are just... And where's the website again? Artworkofsam.com. Okay. And then you go through either Walkabout or Yosemite Sam. Not to Yosemite Sam, not Yosemite Sam. I know your copyrights peoples are out there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on what are the other things my name should get for free. <laughs> <laughs> so Sam, besides gaff tape, what are your what are the things that you carry with you? Jumper cables and know how to use them. <laughs> That's an important skill. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want another one of those jumper battery boxes yeah i have that too yeah yeah i need to give myself another one mine stopped work yeah a, uh, they're very much worth the investment yeah especially at festivals when you want to charge your phone yeah <laughs> yeah it's got a nifty little you can just crank it and give it some juice yeah. it hurts though after about 10 minutes of doing it <laughs> what was your cell phone charged no it was only like Maybe twenty percent by that point. I'm like, Julie, I need to, I need to borrow the solar charger. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Julie? Just one of your friends over those you that have. Yeah, um, okay. I volunteer at uh, Philadelphia Folk Fest during the summers. I missed this past summer, but um, yeah, you're in a field, no power. We rig up a lot of things. We have a working heated shower. <laughs> it's a commodity. No, you can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but on the on the trips for photography purposes, oh, okay. what what are your must haves? Especially like if you're hiking through a canyon or where or on a mountain or whatever. Photography purposes or staying alive purposes. Both. Oh. What what do you, what do you keep on you? I always bring some kind of even just a miniaturized first aid kit because you never know what's going to happen. Like I said, Murphy's Law. I've seen your first aid kits. Yeah. I have tiny ones. <laughs> She has a tackle box. That's a huge. That's a first aid kit. Which it's nice. It's awesome. I'm not. I'm not judging. You know, in other places they'll charge you five dollars for a single band aid. Yeah. 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 Don't want to do that. Um. But yeah, mini first aid kit definitely need water, especially if you're out west in Utah or any of the arid areas. Bring water. Bring more water. And then when you think you have enough water, bring more water. <laughs> So uh, you could do that via a camel pack or a refillable water bottle. Do not leave these in the parks. I hate you if you do. 
but um but if your water's purple you might want to uh rethink something yeah you, you might want to find a ranger and ask for help <laughs> as soon as possible <laughs> and maybe not chug it down yeah what don't don't video per video <laughs> video versions way different than the audio version but yeah water bring comfortable shoes don't wear shoes that you're like oh these are new i'll wear them no don't no. Uh -uh. you want blisters that's how you get blisters you want blisters that bleed that's how you get blisters that bleed that's not Trust comfortable guys moleskin no. in the first aid kit definitely mm -hmm. and athletic tape is good if you don't have moleskin in there gauze plus athletic uh tape equals everything <laughs> yes and um Something to carry it all in that isn't going to weigh you down and or is breathable and or isn't going to make you die. Um, so like you could put it in your camel pack if you don't have like a big setup or like bring a camera bag that's comfortable. Again, comfort, versatility, comfort, 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 functionality. Don't bring like a big, oh, I got this big old gaudy bag going to show it off to everybody at the now. No, stop, stop. Sit down. <laughs> but then I could put my waterproof... Uh... Like, you see my camera up there? Yeah. There's a carabiner on that sucker. Yeah. I can put that on my body, on my jeans. I can put it on my camel pack. I have hooks where I can put it. You can grab it. I can take a picture. I can do the things. Carabiners are amazing. I love carabiners. Yeah. Carabiners is one of those things is when, I, when I'm walking around trade shows, if I find a, de you know, not a super cheap carabiner, but when I find a place with a carabiner, I grab a few of those things. I forgot what company. They were so awesome that for their promotion, not only was a carabiner, it was a carabiner with like a little knife on it and, uh, and, and um, bottle opener on it. You yelled at me about my carabiners. I can hold 150 pounds. And you're like, why would you ever need to do that? Come on. look. You at chose me. them for their color. Yeah. And they're 150 pounds. We passed up the ones that didn't do anything other than look like carabiners. <laughs> <laughs> you might just need to rappel down a mountain with it. I might just be hanging for my life by that carabiner. Or it's the only thing keeping my camera from falling into a void. That's a thing. You can't get it back. Especially if it's in a cave. Like, you lose anything in a cave, it's gone forever. Like, oh, my headlamp's not up here. Dang it. I lost my sister's headlamp when I went caving one time. And I lost it in a hole, and I could see the light. I couldn't reach it. I had to go buy her a new headlamp. So, attach the things that you want to keep on you to you. Yeah. It's just what I've learned from life experiences. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Like all of these. I could attach this to me. I wouldn't want to. But I mean, She's holding up one of uh, her passport books. Yeah. I, look, it's fat. None of the other ones that you get look like this. They're only like that. Mm, no. She she uh, uh, redid her passport book to add it's pages. To maybe it. that thick. Mine is that thick. So that's two books. What are you talking about? This is like four books. Okay. There are pages in here that you can't put stamps on, so don't need those in a new book. But you can't just buy the pages for these because they're not. The, well, that one doesn't even do that either because it already has all the pages. But these little ones, no, I ran out of pages on my first trip. Like, Utah. Utah is what did me in. <laughs> Why do you... You only get eight... Pa what? Front to back, you only get, like, eight pages. Utah has so many national parks. It's Pikes Peak. Uh, Canyonlands. And it's for, like, different areas. Like, this whole freaking section, you only got eight pages for... One, two, three, four, five, six. Six states. With... <laughs> 42 national parks in them. Why is there only eight pages? This is stupid. The stump. Because they weren't expecting you to hit all 42 national parks. I haven't hit all those yet. I still have to get there. <laughs> I need more pages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. So apparently you didn't add enough pages so far. No. Well, that's why I have these on there now. And that was a trip. 
trying to get all those little pages to fit on all of one, yeah. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these suckers. <sighs> Let's talk a second about the people. I love the people. <laughs> all the people. <laughs> You know, you, you you obviously stop and talk to a lot of people, I assume. Mm-hmm. There is, um, you meet people on the road. Like on my first trip out, um, I was going to get food after being at Wind Cave all day. And I had no idea where it was. Half the time, I don't know where I am. I think that's the point, because I refuse to go on, like, highways. I like byways if I can mm-hmm. get on them and stay on them. Because you see more. And it's not just like, I have to get to this place right now. No, I'm, I'm a meanderer. As long as I have gas, I'm a meanderer. And even if I don't have gas, find gas. Be, continue meandering. You keep a gas can in your car? It's a two-gallon gas can. I've only had to use it once, and that was in Southern California before I got to Joshua Tree National Park. And uh, I was literally probably 500 yards away from the gas station. <laughs> Could get up that dang hill. <laughs> and that gas was like five bucks a gallon. Scalpers! It was around think... 29 palms. Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. yeah. 29 stumps, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, um... I've been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you see a turtle... Yeah. Don't touch it, don't go near it, don't look at it, don't just back away slowly, and if you scare it, tell, you, tell, tell the park ranger immediately. Yeah. Find him. Hunt just, him down. Just, you're, just know that your day is over, and, and... Find help and just stay there. Yeah. Your day is over. What a majestic turtle! If if you scare it, it will die. So do not. And that and it and it. Um, go ahead and do yourself a favor. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google desert turtle, and you'll see why not to scare it. Yeah. What a very majestic animal. Hey, it's genius for where it lives. Th- that's true. That's true. It is specifically made for where it lives. <laughs> but, yeah, anyway, the people. I was coming out of Wind Cave, and I uh, pulled up to this place. I believe it was called the Hitching Post Bar and Grill. And I'm like, oh, well, how do I even get in here to order food? How do I, how do I food? And I'm just standing out there looking like a lost puppy. <laughs> and this one lady looks at me, and she's like, you okay? You need help? You want food? I'm like, yes. Come on in. Come on in. We have open mic night tonight. Come on in. Come on. We'll sit you here and we'll get the food. And I know that lady. She's a really good singer. And and then later we got to talk and they're like, wow, you're doing this adventure all by yourself across the across the United States. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> and they're like, I'd never be able to do that. I ended up, they gave me my food and I, get, got the, I met the owner and they we talked about Sturgis and they gave me a poster for Sturgis and um, bought me a beer and it was it was great it was a good old time and most recently on this uh, last trip I met this lady in Loa, Utah I believe it was and I was trying to find a place to stay for the night because it was going to be storming in Utah storms in Utah. <laughs> Storms in Utah. <sighs> Scary storms. Um, but I was trying to find a place so I didn't have to sleep in my car. And all of the places were full. Like, all mm-hmm. the hotels within a 30, 40 mile radius of the park itself were full. Even, like, the campgrounds and the, like, little cabins you can sleep in. No room for the Sam. And I walked into this one hotel and the lady was on the phone and I waited patiently until she got off the phone. I'm like, do you have any rooms? She's like, I actually just sold the last room to the guy on the phone. And I'm like, dang it. (laughs) And she's like, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Pennsylvania. Yeah, I was going to spend, going to go to the Capitol Reef in the morning and the storm's coming in and I'm don't have anywhere to stay and she's like nowhere's nowhere yeah I, no rooms anywhere from here to the park and she's like not even the cabins i'm like no the cabins are full and she's like the cabins are never full i'm like they're full and she's like i know a lady in town who has a cabin <laughs> and it ended up being this beautiful hundred year old cabin 
and she sent me over there and told me to tell her that that she had sent me there and i'm like well at outside this person's house it's a house (laughs) and then there's this cabin right beside it and i'm like do i knock on the door do i knock on the door (laughs) it starts raining do i knock on the i'm gonna knock on the door (laughs) (laughs) so i go up and i knock on the door and i'm like hi i'm so and so from the hotel down the road sent me here and said that you have a cabin and i was wondering if you had anybody staying in it tonight and she's like no nobody's staying in it tonight (laughs) and she's like may i stay in it tonight and she's like yes yes you may stay in it (laughs) she later told me i looked like a little lost duckling I'm just like, I've been all over the place and there's nowhere open. She's like, oh, everybody turned you away. <laughs> everybody turned me away. <laughs> so, um, yeah, for the, the cost you would usually use to stay in like a one person hotel room. I had a house to myself. It was pretty sweet. And, um, and she gave me uh, zucchini bread. Corn was it zucchini bread or was it it was banana bread? <laughs> That's it. She gave me a whole loaf of banana bread to myself. It was like heaven. <laughs> and she gave me coffee and she gave me fruits and she gave me breakfast cereal and she gave me all of this stuff and T V and a warm bed and a floor that was comfortable. I slept I was on her rug just watching T V because I could lay on the floor because I know it was clean. <laughs> and not not the bed, but the floor. Yeah, the floor. Okay. It was very comfortable. And like I said, it was a hundred year old cabin that they had re like re finished, remade and right. had like this thing on the wall showing the process and they had these really oh, old cool. woman's leather shoes in a box they had made from the old window frames and like other little trinkets that they had found in the cabins or in, in the cabin or in the floorboards. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. yeah, that was that was kind of a miracle. I needed that. Everybody turned Sam away. <laughs> <laughs> and then it rained, it downpoured, and I'm out there trying to bring my stuff into this nice little cabin, and I'm just, like, drenched. Completely drenched. And she's like, come on, get in here before you get... Oh, you're already wet. Oh, you're like a sad duck. <laughs> but, yeah, that was, that was fun. I know you don't do as much art stuff, but you ever figure, you know, want to paint? I know you're always going to take your pictures, but you're ever going to go back and maybe, you know, do what he was doing, painting the, the landscapes. I mean, I did a couple mm-hmm. after all my photos were, I thought, gone forever. I did a picture of Big Bend in, mm-hmm. was it wasn't Conte Crayon. It was, what is it? Pastel. They're round. They're more like rectangle shaped. They're crayons. They're a lot of color. And if you touch them, they smudge and they... It's awful. But I used those and I recreated some of the scenes from Big Bend. Like of the big mountain up mm-hmm. in the... Chico? Chisnos? Chis- big Bend National Park Mountains there. <laughs> You know, Not Little Butt with, or Big Butt, because those were somewhere else. No, that was in um, North Carolina, Big Butt, Little Butt. Yeah. I just like talking about Big Butt and Little Butt Mountains. Yeah, they're real. They're real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, what a big house on Big Butt. Oh, that's a big house on Little Butt, but it's not as good as the one on Big Butt. <laughs> yeah. We had great conversations. Well, we were lost. <laughs> were we? I thought we We didn't... were following Susan and Susan... Susan caught us lost. The GPS. She sometimes tells us to go left off of bridges. I prefer uh, the wa- uh, Waze app myself. I prefer yeah. Susan because she's not Waze and I don't use data. Yeah. Mm. Either way, it doesn't matter. It all eventually will tell you to turn left off of a bridge. Exactly. <laughs> Waze has not done that to me yet. No, but Waze has told me to turn right into a building. Oh. <laughs> 
turn right here. I can't. I will drive through that building. <laughs> I've had so many GPS try to kill me. Turn left. Turn left now. Make a U-turn and turn... Like, it, I'm on a bridge. This bridge is half a mile long. No. <laughs> Susan is pretty good. She likes off roads though. Like she'll take you on an off road road all day long and won't get you lost. Eventually you'll find your way home. <laughs> I love my old GPS. I got rid of it after it took me off road when there was no reason for me to go off road. And then I'm middle of nowhere on a on a dirt road, uh, which there was no reason for me to ever go on dirt road because I was just I was just going from. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Southfield, Michigan yeah. to Westland. There was no reason for me to ever hit a dirt road in a middle, like in an area I it looked country. I There is no reason for me to be anywhere near here and middle of nowhere it just goes, you've reached your destination and just died. Huh. It <laughs> died right there. I eventually got it back up and I gave it to someone else. With a warning, um, <laughs> but it, it didn't like work for the rest of that night. <laughs> I swear that one was trying to kill me. It sounds like the one from MythBusters that leads them to the canyon in the duct tape canyon episode. <laughs> you have reached your destination. We're on the side of a canyon. <laughs> <laughs> They're useless. <laughs> so, William, should we do a question from the hat? Yeah, why not? Let's All do right. that. Do you have any questions you want to ask? Because this is usually the last question. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I did notice that when we asked you all the equipment, you, you did all first aid stuff first. That was kind of interesting. <laughs> well, I mean, I am me. Yeah. I'm, I, I As she I holds like up um, her <clears throat> damaged thumb. or Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I do like that when uh, you ask a photographer what gear to take, and it's n almost no camera gear. Like, I mean, first, these don't die, and then you can do camera gear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, those those. I mean, I have my fisheye, I have my camera that I can, I can face plant into water, and it doesn't die. I had a camera get filled with sand once. Have you ever tried to get sand out of a camera? Yes. This is why I don't have any of my own pictures from Kuwait or Iraq. Sand destroys cameras. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I had it on the beach. And then I had to go on a plane. I had to actually went and I tore this camera apart with my... I went and bought little tiny screwdrivers to do so. And I took it apart to try and get all the sand out. And then I realized I don't have the rest of the tools to put it back together or get the rest of the sand out. So I had to take it on a plane, all discombobulated. And I'm like, they're going to oh! think I have a bomb. So I put everything inside of a Ziploc bag. And then I put on the bag, like I put in the bag, this is a camera. It's full of sand. I'm taking it home to get the sand out. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't touch it. I mean, I was very... It's a camera torn apart. You clearly see the sand in every freaking crevice. Right. But, yeah, if you're bringing home things that are broken, make sure you label them because they probably will go through your bag to see what it is. And if you oh, yeah. have it labeled, they probably will figure out, oh, it is a Especially camera. Especially when they know it's uh, camera gear because yeah. most airlines are pretty lenient on camera gear. Um, I think I've already told the story that someone told, you know, they're, they're like, hey, Oh, <coughs> sorry. No. All right. I think I already told the story, but people were telling me, oh, yeah, you totally bring all the tripods and monopods in your suitcase because they don't know how to handle cam camera gear. So they'll yeah. leave all that stuff alone, even though it has spikes on the bottom. So I decided to put that to the test, and I had a bunch of super cheap tripods and monopods inside of a bag, like four or five of them. <laughs> and the only thing they asked me to do is, sir, do you mind um, moving some of your tripods around so we can get a better look at your bag? And that was it. Really? I mean, a monopod is pretty much a collapsible spear at that point. Oh, yeah. Dang. You get mad at me because I have a belt on. I had a penny in my pocket once. It'll take them mad at you if you have a belt on, but they're like, move your camera gear. 
I had you a tea bag a, in my pocket once. It, it, it seems like different airports have different rules because I've been told, I think it was once or twice, like, oh, you don't have to take your belt off. I have big belt buckles. Yeah. You know, one time they told me you don't have to take your belt off. It's like, I was like, I have a big belt buckle. Oh, yes, you have to take that off. Okay, well, then, you know, and then sometimes they tell me to take off my watch and sometimes they yell at me when I take off my watch. So it's just, just yeah. I think some of it's preference. Yeah, I know. Uh, at least with the belt buckle one, some of them just want to get you through as quickly as possible. That the makes bigger sense. belt buckles set off the metal detectors because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they have different metals in them. Yeah, <laughs> metals. I've had my keys set metal off the metal smithing. detector before. Is All right, bronze? so where was the nickel? I used to them? have a, like a whole bunch. I used to collect keychains. My sister would go to like uh... Chicago and buy me a keychain, and I had one that was really really heavy. And it was some metal. Might have been copper. Might have been. I just remember I was at the uh, federal building downtown, mm. and the one guy was like, "Let me see. Let's take this keychain off real quick." Deep. This is your problem right here. <laughs> <laughs> At least he told you. Yeah. He's like, oh, "You can go." <laughs> it's just a keychain. All right. So I'm pulling up questions from my hat. Um, we do need more submissions. If you submit a question. In- if you submit a question that makes it in there and I read it, I will have your name on it and I will go ahead and shout out either your name or Twitter or whatever you sign it with. So you could always send your questions to podcast at medialayersandwich.com or just join in the Media Layer Sandwich groups. Uh, you know what? Do you have one? I'll, I'll get another question. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. Does getting my thumb fixed count as that? <laughs> okay, I think this is this is a good one for you. Um, when do you know it's time to take a break, and what and how do you take the break? Do you do to take? What do you do to take a break? That's way too many do do do's in this question. When do you know it's time to take a break? Like when traveling or just like general? In general. In Probably general. While you're on your you, yeah, while you're working on a project. So it could be sitting in your backyard taking pictures of chickens or it Maybe. could be <laughs> Or it could be um I should make a whole website dedicated to them. You should totally make a whole Beauty, you know sweet pea. Honey baby. Duster. Mop. We're gonna be here for a minute. Idiot. Stupid. Draco. Red Baron. What the heck are you doing now, baby? (laughs) (laughs) Hawk. Hawk one. Permafrost. Wait, so there's Hawk and there's Hawk one? Well, Hawk and Hawk, they look exactly the same and they're sisters. So one's Hawk and one's hawk they're both hawk okay (laughs) they were all permafrost triplets before they changed colors that was all of their names was permafrost triplets because they were the same color as babies okay and then they turned into hawk and hawk and permafrost (laughs) and morky moo you sweet pie so how do you know when it's time to take a break while you're hiking or traveling? Um, traveling in a car, whenever you start to get tired is when you should start to, whenever you should be looking for a place to sleep. Um, or a place to park. <laughs> place to park, place to sleep, place to stop. Um, I and just... you've had an issue with that before, at least once or twice. <sighs> Iowa hates me. Um, Yeah, I was traveling through Iowa, and it was 3 in the morning, and I was trying to get back to I-80 because Susan had taken me on some, I don't even know where we were. The GPS. Susan was like, you like adventures. No. Let's go on one. I had her on (laughs) avoiding tolls, and she's really good at it, except whenever you don't know where you're going. (laughs) And it was 3 in the morning. I'd been traveling for a while. And I was going through, I was going through a light, and it had changed to yellow as I was going through it, and I was the only one there. And uh, unfortunately, there was a cop here, 
and he came up behind me. And I swear to God, it was probably the stickers. Um, <laughs> well, back of her car has a ton of stickers of I, national parks and all sorts I of stuff. I collect a sticker from every national park I've been to. So if you see my car, you know it's mine. And um, so he goes over and he, he pulls me over. I get pulled over and he's like, you really been to all those places? And I'm like, yeah. And he looks at my GPS and I have a map and I have another map and I have a travel atlas. And he's like, you got all the things. You got the GPS, you got the maps. And like, why do you need the maps if you have a GPS? Because you can't trust them. He's like, how long have you been driving? Since nine, I mean 11 this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> sure you have. So he takes my stuff back and then he gives it back. He's like, I'm not going to, I'm just going to give you a warning, but um, up ahead, there's a gas station. Uh, you should go there and either take a nap or get some coffee, but uh, take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that it's safe there. I don't know about left or right on any part of that rest of the road, but I know it's safe there. I highly suggest you stop <laughs> and take a nap. I'm like, okay, this is the road to I-80 though, right? And he's like, yes, if you keep going on this road, you will hit I-80. Okay, but you take a nap. I'll get some coffee or both. <laughs> <laughs> so I go to the gas station and then um, I stop and I get some coffee and a monster and... I must have looked like death. <laughs> but uh, I I didn't stop there. Like, I probably should have. I kept going until I found I-80, and I found, until I got to the rest stop on I-80, and then I crashed. Um, when I got there, it was raining and cold, and then when I woke up, there was some kind of event going on with cops and people and, like, road workers. And I'm like, what in heck <laughs> you woke up during a festival it was some kind of festival inside of the rest stop and i'm like hey, time traveled <laughs> <laughs> and i was telling miss this this is actually the reason why i recommend you stop if i'd have known better i'd have stopped at rest at the gas, gas station, station and went to sleep i told this story to my uncle and my uncle was about to hit me <laughs> uncle tom the very quiet one you met right. him and he's just like I'd have freaking given you a ticket. <laughs> you could have killed somebody. I'm sorry. Well, that's why they have the parade for the road workers, because they're still alive. <laughs> no, because people who are tired at the wheel are more likely to cause mm -hmm. death. Well, yeah. But, yeah, so definitely sleep when you feel tired. Look for a place to sleep or pull over and sleep. Um... As for Project Go, as soon as it starts making you angry, because nothing good is going to come out of it when you're angry, stop, get a coffee, do something else, take your mind off it, ignore it. Otherwise, you're going to throw your computer, and you're going to break it, and then you have to fix it. Yes, yes, that has happened. It's <laughs> not good. And then you have to deal with stupid people that don't know how to fix computers. And then you take it back and you do it yourself because it took you five minutes to fix it once you knew it was wrong. It's so crazy. with us is William from Basic Computer Health. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> My screen disconnected. Oh, that's it? That's it. That's easy enough. <laughs> I hit it and it hit it hard. And the screen disconnected. And they couldn't it. figure that out after two weeks. You could have helped oh, me more. I could have. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what's on your website? What can people see on your website? Um, photos, pictures, um, old artworks, recent artworks. I haven't been really doing too many. Her, her, her thumb is busted. I could finger paint. I do like finger painting. Nobody likes it when I finger paint. Paint gets everywhere. <laughs> I like when I finger paint. And it's there's fun. also, you can also buy stuff on your website. Yeah, you can buy prints and I have calendars up now. I have, uh, I think I have shower curtains, actually. Wait, do I have shower curtains? I might have shower curtains. No promises yet. Um, big prints, little prints, prints that you can put in little acrylic things. Um, 
panorama, stationary. Um, but things of photos of landscapes and Landscape. cool stuff. Yeah. yeah, fun stuff, cool stuff. Ideas to get your train rolling on where where you want to go. I mean, if I did this stuff and I'm always free of falling, getting hurt, and I'm always half the time I'm hurt anyway. So if I can do this stuff slowly, carefully, carefully, um, you should too. And a lot of the parks, even if you have disabilities and things like that, mm -hmm. there are parks that you can go to to see some of these natural wonders that are yours to see. They, You own them. Go see them. And people are like, oh, I could never do that. And I'm like, why not? Well, I can't go alone. Why not? Why not? If you're going to wait for somebody else to come with you, you're going to be waiting your whole life. Yeah, if someone goes with you, all they're going to do is sleep the whole time. Yeah. And then you have to worry about them when they have to pee and whether they want to see something mm -hmm. or not or whether they want to go on the hike and you want to go on the hike when they're hungry or they're thirsty or they're grumpy or they're anything. Their best travel companion is yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry. But your best travel companion is yourself. I agree with you. Because you would probably yell mm -hmm. at me for going down the canyon wall. <laughs> <laughs> the Potash Road and uh, Schaefer Trail in Canyonlands. If you don't know what I'm talking about it, look up pa Potash Road, Canyonlands. And the first picture you see basically sums it up. And then after that, there's a 30-mile drive into the distance, into the sunset, into the darkness, into the scary as all heck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you don't, yeah. You're going to send I me recommend pictures it. to put over this podcast, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> going to give everybody vertigo. <laughs> okay, you can find Sam's pictures at... Artworkofsam.com. And with us was William from allaboutwilliam.com. And I'm Toad from Toadin.com. Please follow, rate, subscribe. Um, if you're watching us on YouTube or just went to the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast on Stitcher, Podbean, iTunes, Podknife, a uh, bunch of other places. Probably more places to come as we look for syndication. And we... W there's a good chance we'll be syndicated on a place very soon. I just can't announce it yet. Uh, we're still working on the paperwork. There's things to sign and, and all that good stuff. Uh, you know, work fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it'll be interesting. <laughs> oh, once I announce it and, and, and they look up where, where we may be syndicated at, uh, you'll find it interesting as well, I'm sure. <laughs> But thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed our discussion. Join the discussion on our Facebook group, Media Layer Sandwich. You know, and may the algorithms be in your favor. Bye.